again by being referred to, you can ask me about the machine and make. But he came back later. That father came back later. They did. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that. But Mac Fallon came. And, uh, and when they got down here, and I, I don't know whether they had married their wives then or not, but you know, Ms. Mac Fallon. Ms. Bratton Mac Fallon? Ms. Bratton Mac Fallon. Mother, Ms. Robson, second marriage, Robson. And Ms. Cock, uh, uh, Cock mother. And Ms. Boyson, you know, then, uh, you see the second round, Miss Devil, Miss Devil was the second round, this is the first round. T. Boyson. Yeah, T. Boyson. And all of the sisters of old Mr. Uh, and daughters of old Mr. Tolliver. Oh. And if Mr. Tolliver ever had a son, I don't know anything about it. Tolliver, yeah. T. T-A-L-I-F-E-R-R-O. T-A-L-I-A. I-A. F-E-R-R-O. Okay. But now, Miss Cop, you see, they all own, they might have bought it Mr. Todd, all, all own land. John Mr. Todd, uh, Miss Cock, and Miss Sir, and Miss Robinson, and Miss Boyce, and they didn't come back. That's four dollars worth. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know they were all sisters. Well, I'll be gone. Now, now Miss, that's Miss A.M., Miss Monroe Sue, right? That's right. Yeah. The first house west of him on top of the hill there. Oh, well, that's where Ludy Appleton, Ludy no. Appleton used to live. No, at, there's a house between where Ludy used to live in the Bennett place. <coughs> that's right. Yeah. And that's why, that's why he had a, his wife, her name Miss Lily Gooch. Yeah. And she used to bird hunt. She, she could take a gun and lock a bird down to visit a man. Really? I remember one time me and my mother and a bunch of us kids went out Hills Parish back out in Yonah with the bird dogs and <coughs> Rabbit went on the bird pile and she got up on top of that bird pile and shook around the rabbit come out and brother she killed him before he got here for the law. It's unusual to find a woman that's got that kind of coordination. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. I know a woman down there in Bryant could go to that school in the bottom and kill more squirrels than a man can. Who in the world is that? Well, she, her name was Howard. She's Ruth's first cousin. She married a young. Mm -hmm. And she killed many birds any man with bird hunting too. Good. Good shot. Now Mr. Gooch, he was B. P. Gooch, that's, that's right. right. He was very active in this Baptist church. That's right. You see his name in this old yeah. old uh, yeah. I got his name on something over here in the Ed Gammon story. He was with a bunch of men that went to the jail and baptized Ed Gammon. He uh he had a gunsmith shop and made worked on guns and things down there. Well, now we had a Gooch, oh, Gooch, Joe Gooch was in the shop. That was his son. Yeah. yeah. He married uh, Sims. Did he marry Sims? I don't know who he married. No, either. that's not who he married. He married somebody from here, though, I believe. You know, the Bennetts live where the Appleton lives now. Mm -hmm. You know, he moved up in the Bennett house. Yeah. He had Columbus. And uh, Harris and Johnny and George, he had four boys. And he couldn't even write his own name when he married. His wife was a school teacher. She taught him to write. Mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. And George met a doctor. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I tell you, old man Bennett was sawing a plank into it. He was holding the plank and sawed two of his fingers off with a handsaw. Yeah. <laughs> but he kept a job as a paint foreman after Mr. Robinson retired. He was a paint foreman. Yeah, I know he was. A long time. I think he went in the shop in 1911 and taking that job and went yeah. to go back in there. Yeah, let me go see who this was. Go up by. It was barren. He just came through the driveway. He'd been to Oxford. Yeah, I, I knew there was some kind of a problem there with with Bennett going back to work, you know, during the strike. Right back to work in 1911. My daddy come out in that strike, and Lloyd come out in that strike. Well, Lloyd was working in the yeah, shop. Yeah, Jim Wood both were working in the shop. They both come out in that strike. Mm -hmm. 
But that never did work no more after the end. The Lord never did work more in the shop. He went to work on the paint game for a while and he went to play. I got a packet of material over there the other day from a fellow in Memphis. And he had Xeroxed some old newspapers, some 1911 newspapers. And, and he also had some little things called strike bulletins that they published down here. Had them printed and distributed them all over town. And it's telling what's going on with the strike. That's 1911? Yeah. And it says that the headquarters of the strike was New Bears Cafe. That's right. <laughs> I just wondered if you remembered that. I remember where New Bears Cafe was. Where was it? It's right between the water valley back and the railroad. I'll tell you. Old man, Elmer McCormick had a brother. He delivered milk in the morning to that cafe. And Henry Lyon, you don't remember him. I've heard he's hunchback. Henry Lyon. He, he, they got scuffling over a gun. They gun went off and killed old man Elmer McCormick's brother. And uh, one day I was down the street and Frank Harden said, you know that fellow standing under? I said, no. See, uh, Elmer McCormick's wife was pregnant when he got he got killed. He said, that boy was born after McCormick got killed. And he lives in, had a big Texas hat on. He said, he lives in Texas. He's back here visiting. Of course, I didn't know the first time I ever seen him. Frank knew him. Here's a bulletin. This is January 13th. Strike been going on now for two, two months. months. See, it's two years. Thirteen. Oh yeah. yeah. No, it's January 13th, 1912. Been going on since October. Macomb City under martial law. Strikers offer reward for arrest. And all, uh, strikers offer award for arrest and conviction of any striker who has molested any, any scab since the strike started. See, they were being accused of uh, beating up the scabs and all. Had around, you talk Frank Smith was sure. Yeah. I remember all that happened. They had a shooting straight in the shop and killed a whole bunch of them up in the shop. Yeah. The next morning, you find them old fellas walking all out through the country, leaving. <laughs> they was getting out of here, wasn't it? Here's a pretty rough one here. Woods Got Rock. G-O-T-R-O-C-K-S. Woods Got Rock. Mm -hmm. Silman Woods, a prominent young attorney, doctor, politician, and an all-around soft pedal appendage to the world of progress and intellectual development of high, of cost of high and frenzied finance. It tells about his marriage. No, he has married himself to the uh, to the element in town that's against the strike. It's it's again it's talking against Silman Woods. Did you know Silman Woods? I've cool hunting with him when I was a kid. Yeah. I know him all the time. But the best one in here I may I not know who, who kept all that stuff. Somebody Oh, I know where it came from. All these old papers and all of this stuff was found in the C.C. C. Bennett house. Oh. Yeah. It was found in the Bennett house. I got a picture of Tom Myers when we, we gave him his 50, 40 year pin. Yeah, I, I've seen that. It's in the paper. Yeah, that's, I got that's the paper a good one. Anyway, one of these strike bulletins in here is is giving Hamner Collins a hard way to go. It says, this man says he didn't belong to the union and he's back up there working. But uh, here's, a, here's a picture of his union card, number 32, when he belonged to the union. They I remember, was, you remember him? I just barely do. I remember him. They tied him up. He went to Better Memphis if they closed the shops down here and I said, you yeah. see him around back for more. Well, he, he must have gone back in there because they're giving him a yeah, hard way to go. Yeah, he went back in there. They're giving him a hard way to go. Here's where a lady got killed on Robinson Crossing right after the strike started. This is October the 20th, 1911. Didn't have anything to do with the strike. Grandmother Morrison run down and killed by passenger train number 23 service this afternoon. Marshall. Morrison. 
Morrison. Yeah, it used to be some Morrison lived across the railroad. Though. I know. I remember where they lived over there. Passenger train number 23, running 45 minutes late with engineer Pete Gaffney at the throttle, had just entered the upper yard, and the engineer was slowing down to stop at the shop and change engines, as had been customary for the last few weeks. When at the Robinson Street crossing, engineer Gaffney was horrified to see Grandma Morrison step out from between the cars on the side track and on the track not more than 15, 20 feet from the engine. She was walking with her head bowed and paying absolutely no attention to the coming train. The engineer was ringing the bell and blowing the whistle. She was 86 years old and had lived here for many years. She had two daughters, Mrs. George Fulmer, of this city and Mrs. John McClellan of Sumner, Mississippi, and one son, Walter Gillespie Morrison of Palestine, Texas. Bring this, is there this uh, poor Miss Fulmer, the one lived the Fulmer Cross in the county? It's George Fulmer. Yeah, I guess that George Fulmer was in Durant, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, that way his, his daddy used to live, uh, that's that Fulmer Cross, that's the name of that cross. That's right, and his yeah. father was Adam Fulton. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's why old man Dunn told me they used to have the engineers meet when they were trying to organize way back then. That's right. The first meeting that I have ever seen any record of was October the, in, in 1800, no, in 1900, and, uh, 1880, and they met at the home of Adam Fulton. That's right, old man Dunn told me they met up there, hadn't they? Well, Mr. Dunn, he wasn't here, but he would remember it. Somebody probably told him. Mr. Dunn? Yeah, he wasn't here at that time. You mean to say he wasn't, what time did he go to work on the railroad? 84. 84. I think he told me he learned the road to hit old man Diesel, Deacon. Old man Deacon run around him somewhere or other. But you know, when I was working out of Memphis, the farmer on the line in beating had no contract. Long time ago. Oh, they didn't? No. And uh, a football named Smith ruined the same place I did on Simpson. Married one of the girls there while you knew. They married her. You remember Merriman, don't you? Oh, I remember Bob Merriman. Married, married, married his daughter, Pearl. Anyhow, uh, his daddy was stood in mighty good with his, with the traveling engineer on the wine he be, and they promoted Smith around the whole bunch of older than him. Yeah. So when they got the contract, they made Smith go back where he belonged for more the rest of back around him. Oh. Well, that killed him. <laughs> I guess so. His daddy was engineer down there, you see, and he had a pretty good pull, and you got all that done. You got promoted around them, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that ever happened here. They, uh, I don't know just how they established what order you got on the seniority roster, but if you had five or six promoted in one day, I guess you would take that firing seniority and promote them on that. Yeah, that's you? right. We're done. I, I, I won a whole lot before Walter Mills did it. He promoted for the same time I was. Mm -hmm. I got. A, I just happened to be here. I had been promoted just a little while, and he, I went down. I, I showed up for twenty-three. I was firing a job on the south end, and he called me for twenty. Was, if you're late, they always call me. But, but if it wasn't late, I always showed up. I went down to the depot and said, "You go back home and get ready. We're going to use it on the whiz at two thirty. I had been promoted just a week or so. Whiz, whiz. You used to run right at two, right after, follow right out about two thirty. It'd be easy. It's called the whiz. One south. Oh. And I went back home, got ready, went, went out and had a, a deaf nigger firing for me. <laughs> Who was that? Old Joe John Williams. John Williams. He's deaf, huh? Couldn't hear nothing of him. Well, where did that Williams go to? I remember. He went to Canton. He picked up and worked all the way to Canton. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of freight engine did y'all have then? Well, we had to. We had uh, 651 class when I first promoted it. Yeah. Well, they, they're pretty good engines, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. They're small. Mm -hmm. 651 class. But they had been here a long time. And I met an engine that Casey Jones had killed on what we call the 400s. We had some bunch of, at one time, we had a bunch of little 400s in the sort of the Mexican government. And I went to Jackson. I did head to Jackson with some engineer, I forget who it was. Just brought the light engine. Well, there's two of two engines. They double headed two at the time, you see. Had to have two crews. And uh, we got to work about it. I don't know about it, we're leaving. I fired our own to Canton. 
234 miles. Good night. Y'all just had light engines? Just the two engines coupled together. Yeah. All the had a conductor, one conductor with us. Oh, they were, they were 600 class yeah, engines. Yeah. No, 400. 400. Yeah, 400 class engines, yeah. Mr. Bob Ward said that he got a job in the Jackson shop. He went out on a strike, but he could always work on contract. And a lot of the foremen knew him, and he was a mason too, you know. So the foreman at Jackson got him up there and told him to lead, the, lead all the wheels on those engines and fill up the spokes with lead paint and so they wouldn't open up, so they couldn't see the cracks in the spokes. So he leaded them all and painted them, and they took them on to New Orleans and delivered them to the Mexican government. And uh, you, you know somebody was down there in the, during the Second World War, or right before it, and they saw that 638 still down there in Mexico. Love it, running. It? Yeah. That same engine that Casey used to run. That's it right there. But those 600s weren't as big as those that you had later on. You had we had some eight hundred later on was bigger than the six hundred. Yeah, but you had some. Charlie Allen used to call them bull humps. That's seven hundred. Seven hundred. Six and seven hundred all the same size. Same yeah, weight. that's what I'm talking about. Had a hump in the boiler. Yeah, that's right. And then we had, then we had the old eight hundred, and they had a wide door. Wide door. Yeah. Then we had the round tanks, nine forty five. Then was round tank had a round water tank. Mm -hmm. I guess you've seen them, haven't you? Yeah, I remember them. 945 and there's two or three of them we had here. I got a picture of one right over there on the Durant local. Yeah. With Mr. Henry Stewart's on there. And there's two nigger brakemen. One of them is named Ben Salas. Yeah. And the other is named General Smith. That's right, I know both of them. General Smith stayed the type plant a long time. Yeah, I remember it. that. And uh, Ed Smith was a conductor. Mr. Stewart was flagging. And those two nigger brakemen. Levy Vandenberg is firing, and I guess that's the Markey engineer on there. I've got that. The Markey run this 684 a long time. He did? And I, I, and I made my first trip on the six, 663 with Will Williamson. I went to work here. They finally put it on the local down there. It's still local down there. I got a picture of the 684 crossing Wood Street with a banana train. Mm -hmm. And old man Harry Williams is the engineer. He's one lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a little fella standing in the gangway. This picture is about 1908 or 1910. He's a little short fella, and I'll bet you that shorty counter. Did you uh, ever know him? Yeah, he went to. He tried to rid his uncle. That's what I heard. Yeah, I know. He met old Miss Ritter's brother. Yeah. yeah. He went to the Katy <coughs> from here, and he's, he's a fuel inspector. He had a private car out right there. Good, right? Uh, he come back here one time. I seen. I met him over there with the Water Valley back. Him and Charlie Ritter together. Well, he owned a little farm out here. You know where the Kimsey place was? Yeah. Just the other side of the Kimsey place. I believe the night well, his nice place was next. Yeah. And then a little place, forty acres long, to Shorty Cannon, and that's where Charlie Ritter, Ritter came from. He got him down here to work that little farm, moved wow. up, from, uh, up in Illinois. Hmm. Charlie, Charlie's teenage when he come down. Yeah. I know. I've known Charlie ever since he come down. Well, I didn't know when they came down here, but I knew there was some connection. And Miss Ritter had another brother. It's Charlie's uncle. I guess I know it's her brother or who in the area, your uncle, Charlie. It's come up a little storm, thunder and lightning, and he come all the way to the house, sat down under a tree, and the lightning killed him. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. I was just excuse me. Come over here and let me show you this picture. I thought I'd go to the garden to work. I won't never get away from me with it. 684. That's Harry Williams. I don't know who that is. Mr. Williams gave me the picture, see. You got, didn't you do the leg of Oliver? No, he, he lost his leg in all the Holly Springs, firing for Charlie Hammond. I'll tell, tell you what he told me one time. I was firing for him. I granted it. That's where you had any fireworks. I, I granted it. I granted He told me, he said, he turned the engine over to follow Is that right? He turned the engine. Yeah. And his leg was gone. And he said they kept on trying to get him out. He said, don't try to get me out. Take a hand and cut the damn thing off and move it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like old Harry Williams. Yeah, he, he was on the Panama in his late years, wasn't he? He's always on some young things. Yeah. He, uh, 
I know where he lives, but about it. I don't think you're still out for the baby church that's going down. Yeah. That's where he lives. Well, I yeah. yeah. I tell you, old Dr. Fox, the one legged doctor, uh, built that house. Yeah. Uh, Fred Kendricks told me that Dr. Fox built and that he, house. And that house burned before he moved in it. Yeah. And he built it right back like it was. Just like it. And well, he I went from Better Vaughn to Mississippi. To where? Vaughn? Is that doctor? Right? And he had a son in Canton. Cotton bar. I used to go around Canton. Well, there used to be a company in Canton, Colton Brothers and Fox. It was a. I don't think that's one of them. That's a hard wholesale place. Yeah. I tell you, I broke that wrist. Well, I think McMillan lived. It used to be a sweet church. Yeah. And I fell off that church and broke my wrist. Yeah. And Dr. Fox set my arm. Uh huh. So you knew Dr. Fox. Yeah. Right there is a picture of that crew on that local. And there's uh, DeMarque and Mr. Henry Stewart. And there's Levy Vandenberg. And there's General Smith and Ben Savage. Great big old black niggas right there. Yeah. Oh, uh, Dick McMillan, somebody built a house around the sweet church. In other words, part of the church is still in the right. house. That's, that's yeah. part of his house, yeah. yeah. And you know, well, several years ago, a lady called me. You remember the old fellow that preached a house? She was living on Bergman Street. Yeah. Well, they come over there, they want to see me. I, I didn't have no idea to jack rabbit, but they want me. And an old lady over there named Black. Black. She said, I want to see you. They didn't want to see you. So I the one picked you up and you broke your arm and carried you home. Oh, I'll be doing it. Oh, I spent the morning, I spent the evening with them over there. Well, I, I, never, I never heard of the blacks. I guess they, they lived up there close to where y'all live. There. I just don't, I don't, I don't believe they did not. Uh -huh. I've been a bit this or something, anyhow. Oh, well, there's some Neils. Here, yeah, this side of Dick Black's, Dick McMillan. Yeah. That house is gone. They lived in Stedman's. There's two bunch of those. Yeah. And Neil and Stedman married. Had, both of them had families. Yeah. On the corner of the Whiteheads lived. The Whiteheads. I got... I keep getting letters from a fellow named Joe Sidney White. Yes, yeah, that's one of the boys. Yeah. And Walter, Walter Curl Whitehead yeah, yes, was yes. one of the boys. Yeah. And uh, the house on the other side, the first little house to the left, where I looked at my cousin from Texas. You read one of the letters, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's where she lived. And the next house was a fellow, Kelly lived there. Had a boy named Gid Kelly. And then a house on the cross there sort of behind the Highland house but on that street going to the ocean. Yeah. Some of them Harris lived up there. Gid Harris. He had paying Ed Gamble. Oh, I've heard of Gid Harris. No. They had one named Richard. Gid and Harris. Boy named Warren and one named Austin. And they had a girl yeah. they called a sweet. Yeah. She had a flag with him on the road. And here before I retired several years, somebody told me that Austin Harris was working at the express office in Memphis. And I went down there and I, I didn't know him. I hadn't seen since we were kids. I asked a fellow, I said, is a fellow named Harris works down there? The old Lion Harris, I see him right yonder, poor daddy. He's over there on the line, stuff coming down, he's setting it off, you know. I went over there, I said, Austin, how are you getting along? I said, on the back. I said, who in the hell are you? Uh, <laughs> I finally told him, well, well, he just quit. Well, I'm talking. And uh, something, he caught, he had a way to stop the line, you know, what's talking. I asked him about his brother, said he's still living, and his sister's still living, and we've been saying, well, I'm done. I think his brother, his brother, well, the, young, the youngest one, worked at the dairy there. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to. That I can't think of that girl who she married. She married somebody. She lived there in the house with Harris. And Harris worked at a hardware store down in town. Mm -hmm. That's where he worked. Well, speaking of Harris's, where did uh, Russell's father come from? Wasn't he Mr. Charlie? Charlie Harris. Charlie Harris. Harris. Where'd they come from? Uh, they were here later on time I was alive. I guess around yeah. him. Yeah. And, uh, Stanley Harris and Charlie were brothers. Yeah. You know, Russell and Fleeta went to Memphis and never came back. I guess she got mad at him. Well, he came back here one time and he got fired over there. Well, well I know he did for a while. Well, the service here. Yeah. He's the only person that knocked down on Pagan that ever got back to work, the claim. And then, then they swapped out for something else. Yeah, they give, they give, they give a lot of stuff away to get him back. Yeah. They got him back, though. I, know that I never will forget getting Well, Ted, but you know, had trouble over there. He's fired a good long while ago. Who? Stedford. He had to come yeah. out and work. He cursed well, that way. Well, more Duke, you know. He, he got fired. Yeah. Knocking down. Yeah. He used to give the rest of the crew. He'd buy the crew's breakfast in Canton, though. Yeah. But Daddy was fine for Bill Camel, see? Yeah. And uh, 
I knew somebody was buying his breakfast. <laughs> but you know, uh, one time I was fighting Bill Campbell. We come to Grenada, he used to come out on 26th and say two hours, don't you know, dead time then. The old nigga named Grant, put on a great big old nigga. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Grant said, Mr. Taylor, go on over and lay down and get you a nap. I'll have to take to keep your fire up for you. I, I, I thought he'd be all right. So, a good long while after then, a Nate Cook was running baggage. And that nigga, while I was over there asleep, laying down and resting, he was stealing the mail out of the baggage car. He came around on the way to the depot and put it in the firebox and burned it. Get what he got out of it to keep it and could burn the rest of it in the firebox while he was watching the engine from it. Good. I didn't know anything about all that mess. And it, every time we go in Memphis, I found out later, they go down there and shift them ashes and get all them metal pieces come out of the mail sacks out there. Just, uh, oh. And they fired old Grant for the city penitentiary. And they stayed and kept old L.A. Cook up all day long one day. He didn't go to bed. Went on 26 and back out on 25. They thought he was in on it, huh? Yeah, yeah. And they didn't do it with him, but they fired old Grant. Oh, Willie Moore Duke was a conductor, and Willie Moore got a four of the four ten single barrel shotgun from old Grant come out of the mail. Mm -hmm. I, I lost the thought. Boy, was a, we could all got messed up on that. Cause I, I was just as innocent as you are. You didn't want to do it. I didn't know that. Bill Campbell didn't either. Huh? They just slipped right up on you with that. That's right. Lake Cook always had a flower in his lapel. You know, he, he was... Prior. Yeah, he was a dude, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a... Wasn't much to him, I don't think. Bruce, I, I, let me get... Let me yeah. pay you for them hooks. Well... And, uh, you just you just keep the hook because I owe you for the handles too. Well, well right, hold on. Yeah. let me go get a checkbook and give you a check for the this picture of things. And the All right, what what kind of bank do you need? Well, I got I got one somewhere. They made my name out there. I got something in the truck. All right, I'll follow you out there. Okay. Let me get this here. Uh, he died right after they came home. Well, Uncle Ruth died. At up at Helms on Clay Street, near Helms at the time. She was dead with those girls. Lita Harris's mother. No, uh, no, uh, Tom Ellis's wife. Shorty Morty's wife. Well, they had Mr. Bob Helms right there. Yeah, his wife. Yeah. G Jenny, they called her. her name was Jenny. Uh, and they took they took care of him up there. He lived to be 95, I think. Yeah. yeah he went, one time he wanted to go to Bobham, and then took Boston. Put him on, got on a train with him and didn't buy him a ticket. You know, one man told him to push him to ride anyhow. Mm -hmm. And the conductor came to him and said, well, you haven't got a ticket. He said, I'll pay for him. And the conductor said, no, you're not. You're not going to pay for him. Uh, just let him ride on. But he went, he went to the cemetery up there. And he said, right here is where my mother's buried. And they scratched around there and some went or something and found a little money broken over. They had a little horse and a day something. Well, he knew know. exactly where that story was. That, that's mentioned in that story. So it's him that went back to Bali. See, they wrote him up about 19-something in the IC magazine. They wrote the story about it. <coughs> <coughs> he's 91 years old, and he's still making a garden. Well, when he was 80-something years old, he used to play cutting a little bit in Clark. Cutting warehouse mm -hmm. in the creek bank. And Bill Cotton rolled and knocked him down and broke his leg. But it mended, and he walked up to about the time he died. God. Well, that, that church had a revival. I knew one day was good. So they took the preacher and the singer down there and sang, and that was a good singer. And he sang two or three songs from the room. He said, Oh man, just lay there. And he smiled all the time. He enjoyed it a bit. Yeah, I guess so. Anna Kate Stacy had. Had this picture here, and she told me who that preacher was, and uh, I've forgotten. That's Mr. Lott. Well, I, I guess that's who she said. Is that the man whose little girl got killed in the cave in? That's right. Yeah. That's his book. That's what I said. Rachel Todd. Georgia Butler. She's yep. a Methodist. Yeah, Georgia Butler. Yeah, this other girl looked like Little Rose Hill. That's right. That's you know, all of a sudden, Rennie Davis, Oscar Davis' wife. Well, now that, that one I don't know. Rennie, Rennie give that hand right there. Okay. Now that other one looks like Anne Marie McNamee. What? Well, 
Now, who's, is that Miss Harvey? That's Miss Harvey. That's right. I know that one. Now, who's that kid up there in the door? Don't know. I don't know that. That would be nice to know. This girl is named Hazel Dacus. That's right. She's dead now, I think. And ain't that Velma West? Well, we didn't know that one. It's not Frances McVeigh, is it? No, but she's a good friend of Frances McVeigh. She ought to know it looked like Velma West to me. And this child, I don't know. This looks like a man. That one I don't know. Oh, that's still pretty much. That's me. Oh, that was a that was teaching in the Bible school. That's Miss McLean, Frank McLean's mother. Yeah, that, that's right. That's what Miss Stacy said. Miss McLean. She was a good woman. Well, well, isn't Frank McLean still living? I, as far as I know, he is. He's up to Duke. Frank. Good cuss, I'm 79 years old, Frank McLean, three or four years old now. I know he is, because he was a foreman up there when I got to Paducah. He was already up there as a foreman. And he married Kate Rochester, didn't he? Yeah. He sure did. You ever hear about old man Rock when Mr. Walker first came here? You know Frank Rock was there? No. Wouldn't be funny unless you know When A.A. A. Walker came here? Yeah. Little old short fellow, he wasn't fat, just made sure he rocked when he walked. He looked genuine Irishman, had black Irishman, he had dark skin and black hair and blue eyes. Mr. Walker, was, for his day and time, was a good money raiser for the church. Yeah. And his church was in debt. He started soliciting money and getting it. He went down the street, he must have been paid. He said, Mr. Rock, give me a dollar for the Lord. Mr. Rock said, how old are you, Brother Walker? He said, I'm 47. I said, well, I'm 54, and I expect I'll see him first, so I'll just hand it to him when I get there. <laughs> you mean he was a cat? Always. Always a cat. That's why Bertha got hers, I reckon. I guess so. She was, had old man his frankness about it. You know, you get Bertha mad, she Red call you, Yeah, call you what she thought you ought to be called. Yeah. His picture's in an old IC magazine. It's yeah. in one of these Baptist Church Sunday School men's class pictures, too, right in the front rank. Two big, short fellow with a black hat on. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, was it him that got hurt in the shop one time pretty bad? Yeah. yeah. Something was, fell on him. No. They had those holes, you know, they had those boring machines for boring the holes in the eight to ten cells for the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And had a series of rolls they put them on as they start on one end and come through the boring machine and come mm -hmm. out the other way. He was down fastening one of those things to the floor. And they didn't know he was down there. He really thought about that time somebody showed him one of those six or ten down the line, hit him in the head like him up the top of his head off. That's what it was. It was a head wound. Yeah. yeah. Who was it that said he didn't do have to do any work at that car shop? All he had to do was just carry those cells over there and the other folks did the work to him. What he said was that he had a little shack down on the south end of the Mill shed where he worked on hand cars. And who was it? Frank Rock. Frank Rock. And he put you all the men who broke a handle out of a hatchet or a hammer go to him and he put a new handle. Uh huh. Handle. And he did some other light woodwork like that. And uh, Will Goodman wanted to do a job and he didn't want to do it for them to make a anyway, competition. Oh, Will, you want it done this way? No, Frank, this way over here. Do it this way, Frank. You mean right this way? Will said, no, damn it, Frank, just let it alone. I'll get somebody else to do it. And he went off, went off on his face and he hit him back like that way to that. He said, you know, I get out a lot of, oh, I worry about playing like a damn fool. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> well, I better go. I don't run off. Getting these pictures of your hand to me. That's some of Ann Calloway's kinfolk. She, she comes here about once a week and brings me another bunch of pictures. She bought a special page for Bob. And she's got a bunch of stories in there. Well, it just thousands of stories were lost because there's nobody here to put yeah. them in. And a lot of folks are putting puffed up stories in there that were not puffed up at the time. Some of them, I like, uh, well, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's right. Some of them have blown them up. And, uh, of course, you know more about that than I do. But there's not much way we can judge on this. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Come right in. Oh, 
Oh, my goodness, you just got hello, hello. Come here. Come over here and have a seat. Do you know me, I, I, I do. I have not seen you in a long time. Have a seat. Have a seat. Um, Let me show this to Fred and you okay. too. John Crowine Bailey brought that in. And that's the governor's wife. That's Ms. Earl Brewer. And she was many blocks, you know, right here in Water Valley. That's her on that school picture over there. In the 8th grade or 10th grade. That's many blocks. Uh -huh. This block had about two dollars and one son. When the old married very well, you know, Earl Brewer, he was a young uh -huh. attorney. And I guess he boarded in this block. Probably yeah, and she was passing biscuits. She was young and said, the mother was boarding out. That's where she met Casey. Yeah, he was boarding there and she was passing with biscuits. And she met him. Ah, that's right. Yeah. And they married in that boarding house. They didn't marry the church. They married in the boarding house. I've read that somewhere. Well, I don't know what church is really. Some kind of church is here. Yeah. But Ms. O'Rook was one of the daughters I never knew. You're right. Jim O'Rook. And Ms. Uh, he married Emma. And then, then she married the Hatfield. Miss Hatfield, I knew her. And then Rosa married Block. Uh, Rosa married the uh, Price. Miss Rosa was just the prettiest woman I knew. She was a, a spiteful woman, and her daughter was living over Charles. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, she was in the middle of the child's life. Oh. But see, she was married <coughs> by my Aunt Emma, who married Jim O'Rourke. And she gets to Lou. Maybe old maid, maybe the old maid Block, the name of Lou? Her name was Minnie. Minnie Block was an old lady. And this girl's name was Minnie. But Emma Lou Price, she died for not for friends. She died for dying when she was not for me, she was two or three. But they were two of the most graceful, young girls I've given in my life. We just had natural born and graceful. And here's a. Uh, his doctor's mother's picture right here. Right here, he's showing us all those bad lives that were up here the other night. She was Fanny Baxter, wasn't she? Yeah. Well, she was Fanny had keen black eyes, and when she was old, she looked well, like something. Was that Billy Knox's? Billy Knox's aunt. Aunt. No, no, aunt. No, oh, aunt. I see. Britton Knox's uh -huh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. anyway. Just, I remember this story of Miss Fanny told about people at her house. They had to shed a little bit of water, she'd just move the house over there. Mm -hmm. He'd take the dishes off the table, he'd wash the dishes and things like that. And it got to where the sugar spoon always was gummed up in sugar. And she said, I don't have to run that sugar spoon, but nobody puts it in the car. And one day, after dinner, she went up to the house and out and looked back at the feed, was taking the dishes off the table, so he'd take the sugar spoon and get in the sugar bowl, put a big spoon in there, drag it out, <laughs> and put it back in the sugar bowl. <laughs> That's not oh, about that. That's pretty good. Was she the only daughter of the Baxter? Oh, my goodness, no. I didn't know. Then they had Miss Fanny, Ellen, oh, pretty girl. There must have been at least six, five or six daughters. Miss Barry Leland was one of them, was Oh, yeah, she was a big fat she lady. Was, she, was, she, she was the fattest person I ever saw, not to be the biggest person I ever saw. See, they were small frames, but she mm -hmm. was growing fat. Mm -hmm. And she was just kind of shade free. And that's Dorothy's mother right there. Yeah. And a good, good picture of that, too. Uh, Ms. Graham, Ms. Robson over to Greenwood. Uh, See, there's a family we'll miss because there's nobody to write about the back of okay. And they were. They were very prominent people and very well to be, to be on the old land and took them to the bottom from the railroad out to the way home or where the sun is now. Now um, that, we got a generation before them in these back from stories, but, but this is the next generation that owned the drugstore and all right. I don't know, we don't even say generation you find that family. Uh, I don't know what else. When Alice Virginia Baxter married, the current Baxter's daughter, married them. Bill Trustin and I were the ushers at the wedding. And uh, the receiving people in the, in the hall and all in the other house. And Ms. Robinson's daughter, it's the second daughter, the first one was Sarah Little. Anyhow, 
We were shook hands with all of them, shook hands with them, and she just didn't know we used to have kissed Bill, trust it. Oh! <laughs> her mother was standing by, and Bill almost stayed in his shoes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was a gossip session. Did you get him to sign that card? I gave it to him. I thought he signed it. That was a fatal mistake. <coughs> he gave me the card, and it had a picture of the engine on it, didn't it? No, it had a picture of the courthouse on it. Courthouse on it. I'll show you this one. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It is. It's pretty. Well, we're going to put it right back. Oh, inside. Inside. Okay. Who is this? What Latham is that? Don Latham. Don Latham. Oh, yeah. Don. Yeah, Don's a... Wait a minute and see what you're thinking about. He's a modest, isn't he? I couldn't find one that was appropriate, so I used that. Where are you going to put it? Oh, uh, we're giving it to uh, Ben Sharon. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really good. It's in there again to say, oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, the, this matting is what's so pretty. That's what makes it. See, you put the little touch of yellow around it. Oh, Just beautiful. So, mm -hmm. Diane's meeting me. I like to have one of them myself. <laughs> okay. Diane's meeting me and Ed and Betty are waiting, so we're going to run. Do you know this young lady? Yeah, sure. I know this young lady. Sorry. She's doing just fine, and you? Good. Well, I got to run. We'll see y'all later. Who is this man? Oh. It's like John Lynn Harris. No, that's Bob Larson. That's the daddy of James and Roy Larson. I'm getting me a chair around here. Don't, don't do that. I'm going. I'm going to let y'all put you in the house. Sit down, Fred. That's well, it, it, what I've got won't take but a minute, and I have someone waiting for me. Okay. So I'm just going to sit here and wait. Show you this. Okay. Now, what I did you say this had to go in? About, you know, like this week. Yeah, you well, got it? I've got it, but I've got a grandchild on the way the end of April, and there's no way, is there? Oh, my goodness. I'm afraid they'd be going to Texas by then. That's what I was thinking. Well, I Not the first one. No, it's the second one. You put on the ball, but it was so one cool. child. One on the way. Expected right. soon, but too late, to, too late to get in the book. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Where is this one? Be born. Uh, over at uh, Indianola. We knew somebody else that was born in Indianola. Miss India Patton? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they went in a wagon. Okay. I'm going to see. That's one child. I know I never told this story. I told the child one time. Mr. Chester told me. Lewis and his wife married. But over the pink sense of killing a store the next day sometime, they're sick of him and they're talking about what a fine girl. Lewis married him. He told me they'd always tell him to separate the pink sense. Lewis sure married a fine girl. He said yes. He said he sure did, but didn't be a play hell. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember hearing that. <laughs> oh, well, they have Mr. Pink right there. Yeah. Pink and Elder. They got married in a buggy under a shade tree. They were going to the preacher's house and they met him on the way, so they just pulled up under the shade tree. <laughs> what did they do for witnesses? I guess they didn't have to have any back there. This is that little paper I was telling yeah. you about that, and you can have this hey. copy. It's got a lot of stuff about some old folks and old homes in oh, there yeah. that you might want to look at. Okay. And I'm going to get my order in pretty soon for my right. for my copy. You got a, any kind of a picture to go with it? No, I don't have. Sure yeah. All right. Appreciate you bringing it back. Yes, sir. I'm glad. Yeah. That's really good. I was just here <coughs> talking about Civil War. Well, I guess you can get started on those other things. One of those things you get, get started on the yarn. I just hey, don't know how to Good picture. Said, the post office crew here. There's one picture I'm going to put in there. It's my grandparents and my father and oh, his sister. Uh -huh. Is this your daddy back here? Yeah. What? Let's see. I think that's him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they can call it the rest of it. Who is that? That's a post office picture. Oh, look. But everybody, there's only three or four of them left. Crip. Yeah. One, two, three. Right. Here. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Let's see, how was he your uncle now? My mother's sister. He married my mother's sister. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Roger, Roger, boy, boy, your cousin. Boy, boy, scout, too, fun time. I asked Roger to be in there, saw the rules. I asked Roger, I asked Roger, he is Roger. <laughs> we had a nickname for him, though, didn't we? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 I, yeah.